What's up, people? I'm Shaggy, the Opinionated Hippie, and today I will be uh, listing my top 10 Grateful Dead songs, which I'm absolutely convinced I did already. In fact, I am so convinced, I think my camera just moved, so convinced I did it already that I wrote up a list, looked for the other list, and then I found the other list. So I made a list. I'm almost positive I made a video, just apparently never uploaded it. Uh, but anyways, I got to the dead under the umbrella of Zappa's big note because I once attended a Grateful Dead uh, concert and had to tighten my headband for an extra rush during Jerry's guitar solo. Lyrics from the opening track of You Are What You Is, Teenage Wind. Um, so yeah, there's that Grateful Dead connection right there. There are others, but that's the only one we really need because um, we only need one. So these are my favorite studio dead songs. I ranked all of the official dead albums up through when Jerry passed, like not the one from the vault ones, but everything, including the live ones, because Europe 72, Grateful Dead, um, Live Dead, um, and then because I included those, I included Reckoning, all that other stuff. Those are very much a part of the dead discography. You can't have a dead discography without Live Dead or Europe 72. So I ranked the albums. These are the songs. But I limited this to the studio versions only. So there's nothing from Europe 72 on here. Nothing from Grateful Dead, Reckoning, Dead Set, Without a Net. Um, if I had included live things... Some without a net tracks. Two without a net tracks would have made it on here. Um, but you can probably figure out which ones they are because they're actually, the studio versions are also on this list. So anyways, though I think the live versions are better. But yeah, that's it. I'm going to just really quickly go through the songs. And then at the end of it, I will post the list on the screen for you to look at. So anyways, yeah, that's it. And then you tell me what yours are or what I missed. But these are, and also I've seen The Dead a whole bunch of times. Um... Well over a hundred, more, more. I've seen the dead way more than I've seen any other band. I did the Europe tour, did the 91 tour, did almost all of 90. Um, stopped seeing them in 93. Um, my girlfriend and I at the time went to the Era Phoenix shows just southeast of Phoenix, I think it was, in 92. And we ended up leaving during like the, during drums. I think it was the show they played a Here Comes Sunshine. It was the first one we had heard since they brought it back. And it was just, yeah, it was bad. And uh, we were both really disillusioned. And so we left the show. And it was an early show. Uh, it was in Phoenix. It was December, but it was still ridiculously hot. And we went to Sizzler. We spent hours in a Sizzler, despite the fact that we were not in a mental state to spend hours in a Sizzler. But it was empty, it was dead, and the fruit was delicious. But anyways, it's a story for another time. On to my songs. Number 10, Dupree's Diamond Blues. Funky little number. Love this piece. When I was just a... I don't know the words to the songs. I can never remember them. I think it is one of the their funkiest, just fun, upbeat, great studio track. When it would pop up throughout their live shows when I was seeing them in the late 80s, early 90s. Always a treat to hear live. Just one of the, the neatest little funky, weird little Jerry songs with just some great playing, some great energy, some great lyrics, some great attitude. Just I, one of the neatest songs um, and one of the best songs on that album, which if I'm not mistaken is Oxo Moxoa, right? Isn't that what it is? Oxo Moxoa. Yeah, it is, I think, one of the best songs on Oxo Moxoa. So anyways, yeah. That is a great, great song. Uh, my number 10, Dupree's Diamond Blues. Uh, number nine, Althea. Bum, 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 bam, bam, bam. Love that song. One of Jerry's best, just musical sort of numbers. Just that dum, bum, bum, kind of weird, slow, funky groove. The lyrics by Hunter are awesome. One of those songs that doesn't really have a chorus verse is just... A bunch of verses with no real chorus, sort of about a relationship gone wrong or, yeah, maybe somebody giving up on a relationship and realizing somebody else needs help. And it's just there are so many great quotable lines. Um, yeah, just an awesome, awesome sort of not necessarily a Jerry ballad, but a really strong Usually played, almost always played in the first set, if I'm not mistaken. One of those great first set Jerry songs it just has a really funky cool vibe to it that really i don't know something the dead do that other people don't do 
Um, and absolutely love the lyrics. I just think the storytelling in this, there's a bunch of like literary references. It's just, you think there's levels. I'm still, you know, decades on, maybe like trying to really figure out what this all means or who it's about. Just in all the lyrics, the music, it's just a, a, another perfect song uh, by the dead. Um, number eight, Crazy Fingers. Um, another Jerry song, one of his more spacier, slower ballad type things has this really nice sort of cascading intro then goes on to this almost into like a kind of almost reggae-ish like verse type thing um if i'm not mistaken like all the verses are haikus right this is the one where all the verses in it are haikus so it's a bunch of little haikus back to back to back um right i should have looked that up first but i think they're all like haikus if i'm not mistaken right um, but it's just this weird, your rain falls like crazy fingers, peals of fragile thunder, keeping time. Yeah, they're all haikus. Um, so yeah, beautiful haikus. And it's just this very kind of spacey. It's one of those songs that live, especially when I was seeing them, it was a good second set number where it would kind of emerge out of a plane jam and then kind of fade into an Uncle John's or fade into a Terrapin. Um, so it just had really good kind of spacey energy and the beginnings and ends were a little maybe not too clearly defined, so they were really good in a live setting. But the studio version on uh, Blues for Allah is just worthy and is excellent, gives you the good energy, gives you the sort of delicate nature of the song. But again, some great, very poetic, but not cheesily poetic um, Robert Hunter lyrics. Just phenomenal with a great chorus. Life may be sweeter for this. I don't know. But yeah, I think one of the very, one of the first songs I truly, truly fell in love with seeing them live. Um, Crazy Fingers. Number seven, a song that when it first started popping up live when I was seeing The Dead in the 80s, a lot of people did not like. They thought it was bad energy. They didn't appreciate the energy. They thought it was too dark for the dead, which is weird because I've always found the dark, the dead have a very dark side of them, um, despite the sort of hippy dippy, you know, image that they have. Victim or the crime, off built to last. Um, just I love the tone of Jerry's guitar. I love that weird sort of progression at the end. Um, everything about this, it's one of those sort of overtly complex for the sake of being complex Bob songs. But at the same time, it's not that complex. It's just more complex than things Jerry would write musically. Um, just some great energy. Um, again, it's about a junkie. Um, patience runs out on the junkie. Um, yeah, victim of the crime. Am I the victim or the crime or the crime? Jerry goes on some terrific, dark, deep runs at the end with just his crazy music. Um, a lot of times as they developed the song and played it more and more live, those ending jams would become just darker and eviler and weird percussion sounds would come in and they would really tinker with it. But really, even the studio version off Built to Last, which despite being not my favorite Dead album, um, has two songs on this list. Um, it was a good final effort. Uh, but yeah, just a great, great Bob song. Uh, probably the darkest Bob song there is. Maybe the darkest song the Dead have. Um, but yeah, a phenomenal song. Number seven, Victim of the Crime. Number six, also off Built to Last, Standing on the Moon, a Jerry ballad about standing on the moon with, I think, one of the best set of lyrics ever. One of the best sort of ending lyrics ever. Um, I'm a slam poet. I run a slam poetry slam here in San Antonio for decades now. Um, and uh, a lot of slam poets, you know, they have three minutes to convey a, a message or a poem. And a lot of them write these poems that have, what we, you know, have sort of a, they pull the, the rug out from under you at the end when you think it's about one thing and then they do this switch. You're like, oh, you got me. This is almost one of those, oh, you got me songs because it's all about standing on the moon and watching things down below and watching the wars rage and watching people and all that kind of stuff. But then at the very end, after just this majestic song, like the chords are kind of slow. There's a very majestic, like I'm on the moon, so I got to make like, like the idea of like Neil Armstrong, like jumping on the moon and taking these slow steps, the way the music goes feels like these slow, like jumps, right? Just majestic, like all chords, 
You know, it's not a lot of delicate playing or intricate playing. It's just these broad strokes. It's about what Jerry sees as he looks down below. But then the whole like end part is standing on the moon, but I'd rather be with you on a back porch in San Francisco or something like that. Just like one of these, like you think it's this overarching like song about just humanity and what the earth looks like from above and all this stuff. And then right at the end, you know, I can see all of Southeast Asia. I can see El Salvador. But then there is the line, um, standing on the moon, but I would rather be with you somewhere in San Francisco on a back porch in July, just looking up to heaven at this crescent in the sky. Just that whole, like, I can be up there watching everything down below but I'd rather be down here with you on a porch looking up at that. And to me, that lyric is just one of the most effective. It is just such a powerful lyric. And of course, seeing most of my shows on the West Coast, every time they sing San Francisco, the crowd goes crazy. And the West Coast crowds are not crazy. West Coast crowds are mellow. So you give them a chance to cheer, everybody wins. Number six, Standing on the Moon. Number five, Weather Report Sweet. Love this song. Let It Grow would have been in the spot off without a net if uh, I was including live songs. Um, but I like the entire suite. I like the sort of acoustic-y, more delicate nature of the first part. The definitely energy, momentum building, just the sort of a little more spry version of the second part, the actual part that we call Let It Grow. Um, I just love the whole... The pro, it is a very Grateful Dead approach about the earth, about growing things, just about Mother Nature. Um, the way the second part of it has just those great solos in it and those great like musical breaks. Um, there was a, a Dead show we saw in Shoreline and a friend of mine and I had run into somebody in the parking lot who was giving out favors. Um, and during, they played a Let It Grow to end the first set. And usually in that last jam, they bring everything down to almost like this like single note and then they build it back up. And my friend uh, felt that he had been reborn at that point during that song and like kind of was never the same. Well, at least for the rest of the night, he wasn't the same. He felt like a new man and the song had done it for him. But anyways, it's one of those songs that just musically, again, like th about growing things in the earth and respecting the earth and like getting water from the earth and just like let it grow. But even musically, that last jam, all kind of takes everything down to like a single seed and then lets everything grow back again. So again, the, the, the form meets function so beautifully well in the song. And it's just a really nice, nice, just a really nice, beautiful song. Um, Weather Report Suite off of, uh, uh, what is the name of that album? I can see the cover of it. Why can't, it's not Blues for Hala. It's not Mars Hotel, Wake of the Flood. Yeah. Um, number four, Unbroken Chain. Uh, the first of two Phil Lesh songs to be on this. It's a Phil Lesh song, Unbroken Chain. Um, really nice jam in it. Probably their most proggy song. Probably their most convoluted middle section song. It's probably why they didn't play it that often because it felt a little more demanding than some of their other stuff. Um, but again, it works really well in the studio version. I think the studio version is excellent. It's a great song. It's a great Phil song. It's one of those like, why doesn't Phil write more songs if they're this good? Um, but yeah, another just really neat, well-composed kind of proggy song. Um, number three, title track or lead off track off American Beauty, Box of Rain, another Phil Lash song, amazing lyrics. Again, one of those sets of lyrics were like, the, it's open to interpretation. Apparently, I think it was written in response to Phil Lash's dad passing or Phil Lash's dad getting sick or no, I think he performed it later right after his dad passed away and he came out and performed it and it was like dedicated to his dad. But it's just like, it's just a box of rain. I don't know who put it there or left it there. Like what is a box of rain? Nobody knows what a box of rain is, but it sounds mysterious and philosophical and spiritual and meaningful. And doesn't everybody wish they had a box of rain? But it's just one of those kind of, not a ballad, but also not a rocker, just kind of this uplifting mid-tempo, early Grateful Dead song with really very somewhat mysterious lyrics that the dead do better than anybody else. Um, Phil does a, I'm not sure Phil sings it, but Phil does a good job doing whatever Phil does with his voice and presenting the song and conveying the message of the song. But yeah, just a, a perfect, perfect song. Um, 
Another perfect song, Box of Rain. Number two, Viola Lee Blues. Just a straight up, heavy hitting, guitar saturated, some of the best jams ever. Like, you can't go wrong with any live Viola Lee Blues from like the 60s. Um, this one is a studio, I think it's a studio version. I'm assuming it's a studio version um, off their debut album. I don't think they were using, um, they were using uh, live tracks back then and selling them as, uh, as studio tracks. Um, but yeah, just a phenomenal jam and it's just a great song. Yeah, it was recorded in the studio. Um, but yeah, just a ridiculously great song. It's just kind of jammy and bluesy and it's like there's a verse and then they jam and there's another verse and they jam longer and then there's another verse and they jam even longer. And it's got great energy. It's got great intensity. It's got great playing. Um, I think this is one of the songs that once um, they started doing this, um, and bringing it back in the later years with like the Phil Lesh and Friends and stuff. That's when I went back to like the old 60s tapes and stuff and listening to these older songs and a much bigger appreciation of them once I started to hear like the newer versions of the band try to do them. Um, you know, because I, I don't know, it just never did it for me. I think there's a rawness and an edge, especially to this early version that just can't be matched. Uh, and even those live 60s versions. So yeah. Number two, Viola Lee Blues. And my number one favorite song. Um, I sing this song to myself all the time. I get to work in the morning and usually the, it's still dark and the moon is out. And right there in the northwest corner, most mornings is the spiral light of Venus rising first and shining best. Uh, Terrapin Station, the entire epic the entire, what, 16 plus minute, 17 plus minute epic with all the weird different parts, the weird composed compositional part, the weird guitar frenzies, the weird sort of like Terrapin Station with like the background singers and like the sort of symphonic energy at the end. You still get the lady with the fan and Terrapin Station, the things they would play live. You know, that sounds beautiful from the studio. Um, but then that extra part that is the indulgent studio tinkering part, I think works and I like it. Um, and I went to see the dead in Alpine Valley in 1989. Um, I think there's a, I think one of the one from the vault, from the vaults might be from there or they released something from it. Uh, but the third night it rained nonstop. Like it was a mud field. And I had indulged in a uh, Grateful Dead stuff way, way more than I probably should have. And um, during Terrapin Station, um, I actually, I saw a turtle. Um, there's a big long story about that. Um, and it was, it was a very um, spiritual, transformative sort of epiphany that I had during Terrapin Station in the rain at Alpine Valley in 1989. That was absolutely magical. I wrote a book that kind of was about it. It's right there. I'm not going to tell you what it was because I don't think it's very good. Um, but it happens to be right back here in my purple Zappa box. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, it was just... I've, I've always loved the song. It was played at the very first show I ever saw at Irvine Meadows um, in Southern California. Um, it was played at that show. I fell in love with it then. Um, I just love the storytelling aspect of The Lady with the Fan. I love the entire lyrical section of the Terrapin Station part. The inspiration moves me brightly. Love that part. Love that jam at the end. The dun 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 that whole thing is great. The ending jams that would come out of that are always fantastic live. Yeah, by far my favorite song, and it will never be matched by any other song for personal reasons, for musical reasons, for experiential reasons, for spiritual reasons. Plus, ever since I was a kid, turtles have been my favorite animal. So as a kindergarten teacher, you still have to own what your favorite animal is because it's a question that comes up almost daily. I'm sticking with a turtle, and Terrapin Station is my choice of turtles. So yeah. That's it. Those are my 10 favorite dead songs, studio dead songs. Um, I am going to someday soon, within the week probably, maybe next week, I'm going to see Pavement for a couple of days um, next week. So I'm going to be sort of busy doing Pavement stuff with a friend from college. Really excited about those shows. Um, but anyways, I'm going to eventually do my top 10 Dick's Picks tracks, um, if anybody cares about that. But that's it. Oh, those are the songs right there on the screen right now. Um, Tell me which ones are your favorite, which ones should not be on this list, which ones you're completely baffled by their presence, which ones you're completely baffled by their absence. 
You know how this stuff works. You're all adults. But that's all I got, people. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, share, comment. And most importantly, go listen to music, people, because music is the best. Peace, y'all.